Yeah, don't got natural hair. So what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs>you got, don't got natural hair, I'm going to still accept you because you're my sister. Okay. Point blank. Mm -hmm. But I got some questions for you. Okay, okay. And you're going to have to answer those questions. Right. Give people an insight of, you know, just how you feel when you wear European hair. Mm -hmm. Or people would say European hair, which is not always European hair, but it could be Indian hair, yeah. Brazilian hair. Brazilian. You know, different types of hair. So express to me how it makes you feel. That's the first question. When someone addresses me? No, no, not, not the hair. How does it make you feel? Does it give you more confidence? Does it make you feel, you know, mm -hmm. are you comfortable? Talk to me. Um, well, I don't feel like wearing weave makes me more confident. I just feel like it's a style that I like having. And mm -hmm. I feel that, and not that it makes me look prettier or that it makes me different than when I have my natural hair out. It's not completely natural, but my actual hair out. It's just, it's just a different style for me. I like switching it up, and it's just a different look. Okay, so it's yeah. a different look. Yeah. So you feel like you don't you don't need it, but it's just a different. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so tell the family how often do you wear European hair, or Indian hair, or Brazilian hair, or Ecuadorian hair? <laughs> <laughs> it's so much so much talk, talk to me. Talk to us. Okay. How often? So I have all different hairstyles, like. A week from now, you could probably catch me in braids. Um, sometimes I'll have my actual hair out. However, I feel like my actual hair is, even though it's not completely natural, it's permed. It's yeah, it's processed. But yeah, I feel like it's more difficult to get up in the morning, try to put it in a style that I feel comfortable with, that's going to look presentable. Whereas with a weave in, just wake up in the morning, it's braided, unbraided, comb it, go. And I feel like it's just quicker, easier. Even though it's not natural, so. It's okay. Like, Do you see yourself going natural anytime soon, like fully natural? You know, you said your your natural hair is not fully natural. Yeah. So when do you see yourself making that full shift of just going natural, sister? Talk to me. Okay. So I did think about going natural, like completely natural, doing big shop and everything. However. While I was thinking about that, I was also thinking about what would I be able to do with my hair, what chemicals, would I, not chemicals, what, I'm speaking to my what would I put in, what would I put in my hair to make it um, feel better, or not feel better, but like, look styled, or what could I do to switch it up when I actually have my natural hair, and I didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of pushed me away from the idea of actually going natural, so I'm debating right now. Right now I'm really thinking about it, but I'm still debating because of all that I have to go through to get it the way I want it to look when it's natural. So so you're telling me it's a lot of work and you're not yeah. used to doing it growing up, yeah. so it would be like a big thing for you. Well, growing up I did have my hair natural. I had my hair natural until I was about 12 years old and then I permed it. But while it was natural, it was so hard to go, like it would get tangled so easily. It would be mm -hmm. so hard to comb through it. Like, and give me a second, give me a second. I got you, I got you. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> it's a pick right here. Yeah. Fist on it. Talk to me. Right, yeah. Right, right. We're going to do a, a little experiment right here. <laughs> try, try and pick my hand. Okay. Just digging in. Oh. <laughs> you, you can do it. Go ahead. Come on, come on. <laughs> Is that the arms you can pull? All right. <laughs> All right. So look, we know it ain't easy, right? <laughs> but perfection ain't easy, sister. It's hard to be perfect, girl. And you perfect the way you are. You perfect the way you was born, sister. You don't see all this nappy. This, you, know, <laughs> you don't see all this good nappy stuff right here. Let, let me tell you something about that. This hair. Wait, see, I gotta put my crown back on. Okay. Do I put it on? That's my second crown, y'all. All right. So it's a lot. It, it comes with a lot of work. We talk about natural hair. Not, not, not nappy hair. I would say, I want to say kinky. I would say kingly hair. It comes with a lot of work and effort. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at a diamond, what do a diamond go to, through? Look at coal. What does gold, coal go through to become a diamond? A lot, of, a, a lot of heat. A lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a lot of heat you're going through. Yeah. You got to probably wake up an hour earlier before going to work at school to 
to really put a lot of work into your hair, but it's your hair. And with that being said, you know, and you know, also what I would ask you, did you have a lot of support around you to go natural? Did you have a lot of people, you know, giving you tips and ideas and helping you out, people in your family? Or well, friends. Well, my best friend, she, she supported me all the way. She you, always, can, you can stick your head in the camera. <laughs> just, just like, hey, that's I don't know if you're coming. Come <laughs> my best, best friend. friend that's, that's my best friend. <laughs> my best friend, that's my. <laughs> well, yeah, my best friend, she gave me a lot of support. She was telling me about products I could use to make it easier and stuff like that. However, mm -hmm. my mom being a hairdresser, well, we, we were told that we were all She's a cosmetologist. Yeah, but I call her weebologist. A weebologist. <laughs> Yeah, because you know what's crazy? I just read that. I just read them. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, Dominique put me on. Well, well yeah, she does mostly weaves or ponytails and stuff like that. So she does my hair right now. So when I told her that I was going natural, she was like, she was with it for like a couple of days. And then I went to go do my hair. I told her I didn't want to perm. She permed my hair. Because she was uh, like. Let me, let me see. Yeah, family. You can't blame my sister. This is a good sister right here. It's her mom's fault. Yeah. It's her mother's fault. You see? What's your mom's name? What's your mommy's name? Beverly. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha, sister. Okay, so I'm just gonna start like this. I don't know if you seen the last video, but are you familiar with the white dog, black dog test? Yes. Explain it to us really fast. Okay, basically it was when a child of a child's given a white doll, and black doll, and basically I know that it was one experiment that I know about is when they asked a black black child if they th um thought the white doll or the black doll was more beautiful, they went with the white doll, mainly because of her hair, and that was her perception of what beauty is because of her hair. So mm, okay. Yeah, interesting. If you check out the uh, the black doll, white doll test, mm -hmm. uh, like you did, because yeah. that, that was a, a one scenario, but they'll do multiple children and give them that test and ask them, they'll be like, why is this doll better? They'll ask them, why is this doll better? And the child will be like, because that doll is white. Mm -hmm. And it's the black child yeah. growing up in a black neighborhood. So what do you think influenced that child in their mind mentally to say that doll is more beautiful because that doll is white. What gave them that preconception? As a little kid, these kids are young, you know? What gave them that preconception that white dolls were better because they were white? Where do you think they got that from? Yeah. I feel like it's just the society that we grew up in. Being the, <laughs> around the people that we are around and just everything around us just gives, uh, like, feeds what we feel what beauty is. And the media that we're around, that's one of our biggest influences. It shows us that most of the times you see a Caucasian woman or someone um, in the fashion world saying this is what beauty is. Even though they're not directly talking about the person, they could be talking about the clothes they're wearing, they could be talking about the type of hairstyle they have. But the Caucasian woman is perceived, not the black woman or not the black man, just but like Caucasians themselves. Okay, thank you. She most eloquently broke that down. And I mean, I got this, I have the basically the same perspective on that, mm -hmm. you know, but mine's going more towards like the media. Yeah. Like the TV we watch. Yes. Cartoons. Even look at the cartoons. On the, on the child level, when you talk about most of the children cartoons, that's why it's going to be good, good for any of our kids or our nephews or whatever to listen to more, watch more black animes or black cartoons or more black educational things so you can see themselves or see projections of themselves. So we look at tele television, you look at the model world, most of the models are Caucasian, they have yeah. straight hair, and a lot of the black models, they have straight hair because it's more accepted in the society. Just like when we talk about the, the black males and our, our, our nappy hair in society, there's a, a, a particular time where black women will catch hell for wearing their natural hair in what they would call a professional environment. They still get hell. I, I remember my sister, they still get hell for it, they right? They still do. Do you, do you have any experiences or have any friends um, that went yes. through it? Talk to me. My cousin, she decided to go in for work one day and she had like before she had a weave in and then she had her natural hair out and they had an issue with it they were saying um you need to be in a professional settings you either need to put it in a ponytail putting it back it was it was Yo, yeah so it's actually a law that if someone said that to you, you could smack the shit out of them. You yeah. bro, 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 bro. <laughs> There's actually a law. Now no, I'm joking. Don't smack nobody. <laughs> Don't smack nobody. But that's crazy. They should be smacked because it's absolutely crazy. And um, I mean, I have sisters. I grew up with a lot of sisters. Yeah. And just seeing the experience with them, feeling like they'll be more accepted in school 
they're going for uh, uh, an interview mm -hmm. and no one has to tell them but they feel like yo I just know I'm gonna get this job if I straighten my hair I have a better chance of getting this job if I straighten my hair mm -hmm. you know maybe I could change it back later I actually have friends that they feel like they, they could go in an interview with their shirt hair and then come back a month later with their nappy hair and they'll be more accepted you know what I'm saying yeah. because it's making that first impression of accepting European culture like okay so once I'm in the door I'll be good but I just want to show them subconsciously this is the, the thoughts that's going on in the mind yeah. I want to show them that I accept their culture and that way they will accept me and then maybe I can you know show myself later on down the line you know what I'm saying yeah so um and that that just just that's just kind of talking about the mental conditioning that we have when it comes to how we perceive European culture and how we perceive beauty I'm not saying having straight hair is not beautiful everyone's beautiful every race is beautiful in their own way you know what I'm saying? Yes. But I feel like as melanin, melanated people, being such of a, a dominant people, we should embrace ourselves. We should, we, we should embrace ourselves. We should, we should embrace ourselves. Look, look at Serena Williams. That's just, she's 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 amazing. She oh, she, is, she, is she, she she's like she's the she's best she's tennis she's player in the, the world. Yes. Yo, don't debate me. <laughs> yo, LeBron James. You say both. Yo, yo, you say both. <laughs> Come on now, y'all. The sister from Jamaica. Shit, right. disgusting. Yeah. Black people have a dominance about us. And this is not no racist thing saying, oh, we're better than white people. <laughs> but we are better than white people. <laughs> Come on, yeah. yo, for real. Seriously. You know, like, this is weird, you know, genetics, just to put out there. Genetics. Black people are so amazing. And this, this shows that white people accept black beauty too. When you look at weird shit like porn, pornography, if you look at the number one thing that search is ebony or black. Did you guys know that? That's an actual fact. So that means these races can't get can't even be on their computer like you know, because yeah. no literally it, it sounds weird, it sounds a little, you know, but I'm trying to show you guys that every aspect of society they accept and worship black people, mm -hmm. right? But they won't come to your face and tell you that they worship you. When when you're in there saying they want you to look like them and act like them and speak like them. Yo! I see it all the time, I'll be at work when I was working in professional settings like a hospital, black people would change the way they speak to their white people. When they're talking to me on the side, they will talk with slang, whatever it may be. They'll joke around with me differently. But when they interact with a Caucasian person in the workplace, it don't even have to be the manager. They will change their voice to, you know, basically <laughs> give an impression that, you know, they're accepting their lifestyle. They're trying to be like them. So my thing is, when you say that wearing, you know, European hair, Brazilian hair, whatever, it's a style. It's, it's definitely a style because everything comes from us. I'm saying that, family. Everything comes from us. Every hair texture, any hair texture you can think of comes from us. But, sister, it's nothing like embracing the hair you was born with. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you know, you, you're going to be a beautiful sister regardless. Being a black woman, someone's always going to turn around like, you know, he's going to be walking like, you niggas know, always going to you know, check you out. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, you know what I'm saying? You have to understand that. So, when my thing with you, right, and other sisters that, you know, they embrace European or Brazilian culture, Hispanic culture, when it comes to African culture, right, you're not, you're not only making an example for your peers, but you're making an example for your little sister, your, your, your nieces, you know, your nephew. Mm -hmm. For example, a guy, let's say, you have any brothers or nephews? Brothers, yes. You have brothers, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, you're probably the closest woman to them. Since you live in a household with them, right? Yeah. Every day of your brother see you, right, mm -hmm. with straight hair, right? Now think about this. This is on a psychological level. Mm -hmm. Every time your brother see you with straight hair, right, mm -hmm. and you you're their sister, and you're, I'm pretty sure your mother has straight hair too. I talk to you. Do you think they're more likely to go for a woman with straight hair or natural hair when they grow up in a household with women with straight hair? Talk to me, sister. Psychologically, yes, they would go for someone who has straight hair. However, my brother is very strong-minded, and he feels like if he has a certain type, that's what he's going for, and he does like girls with natural hair. So, what's your brother's name? Kamar. <laughs> Come on, we see you. We see you, son. We see you. Do your thing, bro. Do your thing. I wish you, yo. I'm joking. Yeah, they gonna watch this video. They gonna be dying. <laughs> nah, but uh, on the real, on the real, um, I appreciate you, sister, for definitely coming through. Not a lot of women with straight hair will come through, you know, and she she's confident within herself because she even admitted some girls in front and be like, yo, I got natural hair under this. She admitted that I'm not even fully natural under this. But, you know, 
And what you said psychologically, even though your brother is strong, I know for the most cases, you know, maybe your brother who's around Afrocentric people, how old is he? He's 29. 29, so he probably went to college, he was probably part of a black union. That was around. With no strings attached. No, no. Are you Jamaican? Of course. Of Shame course. on you, girl. You're supposed to know the Buju Bantan. Listen, I can't sing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. But um, I just, you know, I feel like you accept that if a if a if a, if a male child is growing up in a in a household where women with straight hair, psychologically they're gonna want to be around yeah. women. With, with straight hair. They want to probably marry a woman with straight hair because they was influenced by their mother, which is basically their first god. Mm -hmm. Their first, they, they get all their experiences, they get their, their food, mm -hmm. their primary source of nourishment from their mother. Yeah. It's the fact that men are more, uh, more attached to their mother than their father, naturally, mm -hmm. you know? Just like I'm pretty sure you, uh, a woman, most women are more attached to their father than their mother if they're in the household. Because <laughs> we have that problem in our household. There's no black men, and we have to tighten that up. But, um, you know, you said you're definitely considered going natural. Yeah. You know, I says to go natural. It's just that big chop. I'm scared of that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> me personally, as mm -hmm. a male, right? Just observing women, mm -hmm. being conscious because you want a conscious black male. You know, any conscious black male that know about himself and his history, he's gonna tell you like, yo, I, I really like you. When are you gonna go natural? He's gonna try to make you go natural. So when you want someone that's thinking on a high intellectual level. You're gonna go for he's gonna go for someone that's natural, like you for example, you're a beautiful woman, right? Yeah. But if you was natural, right this is me, right? With, with, with you with you with the, the straight, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at you, but yo, it's good. But if you got the app, bro, I'm gonna do one of these. Woo! You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bug out. I'm gonna have to stop you. I'm gonna stop you in your track. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you talk about finding someone that's gonna accept you for you. Cause you might accept you for you whatever, no matter what hair you have, but you have some men who really might have a fetish for women with straight hair. Mm -hmm. And for to give you an example, most African women have nappy hair mm -hmm. or kingly hair, right? So you want someone who's gonna embrace you to the to the bottom of your foot to the top of your head. You ever seen inter interracial relationships? Yes. A lot of white men are with black women with natural hair, cause these crackers know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not racist, but you know, y'all know what cracker comes from. Y'all know what it comes from, right? Cracking a nigga on his back. So, yo, for real, say that's where it comes from. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, yeah, I knew that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it is what it is. That's the, that's the stigma y'all picked up. But, um, you know, I, I appreciate you for coming on. You know, um, Dominique, please talk to her about going natural. I'm pretty sure you know the importance of going natural. I'm pretty sure you know that, like from the other video, that we release pheromones to my hair that literally attracts our mate. No, literally. No, I don't. You know? I from your underarms too. You yes, know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might not want to put on deodorant. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> put your deodorant on. <laughs> no, <Nah, but laughs> please, right? Please, no, please. please do. We're not supporting that. Alright. <laughs> I know y'all got a natural movement when women are growing their hair out. You, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's an interesting one. You know, I'm not going against it. Do what like you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. Be what natural. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, uh, I can never say more. Uh, I appreciate you for being a human being. You know, for being black, African, I appreciate that. But I appreciate you even more with your natural hair. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Could you accept that? I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll go with it for now. <laughs> <laughs> for now. So, really, I, I, you know that it's, it's important for your, your, your um, peers, your, your your children to see you embracing yourself naturally. Because mm -hmm. this could be a stage, you know, before, you know, you, you have a lot of influential people around you. I just met you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to keep in contact. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try and motivate you. Every time I see you, I'm gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna have some, uh, some coconut oil. I'm about to be like, yo, it's some shea butter. Boom. <laughs> but um, I actually, people, you tell me how you go. Tell me your name, Instagram, all that. All right. So my name's Erika Smith. My Instagram underscore uniquely underscore blog underscore follow me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yo, peace and black power, family. Peace and love. Definitely go natural. This is us again. Pooh and Kwame. Dominique and Arika. Arika, Arika, Arika. We out. Y'all have a beautiful day. Peace.